This is Jim Shorkey from Future Home Realty, and here today on Share the Knowledge is Brian Pfeiffer. He's an agent with State Farm Insurance. Brian, thanks for coming in today. Thanks for the invite, Jim. different types of policies that are out there. There's renters policies, there's condominium policies, there's single-family home policies, and then there's also a landlord's policy. Um, so could you kind of just touch on those four things, so those four Absolutely. different policies? Um, you can start right whatever yeah. one you want to start with. Yeah, a lot of people start renting a property, so let's just kind of start there. You Makes know, sense. When okay. they're young in life, maybe they're going to rent an apartment. Uh, one of the things you want to do is always get a renter's insurance policy. Those policies are going to be pennies on the dollar, I mean, really. And what that's going to do is it's going to protect all of your personal property. So if you're renting an apartment and unfortunately somebody breaks in and they steal your TV and some different things, the renter's insurance policy is going to replace those personal items that were stolen. So your furniture, your clothing, your electronics. That policy is going to be pretty expensive because we're not actually insuring the building itself. It's okay. just going to be your personal property that's inside. Okay? okay. Now, when you purchase a home or a condo, you're going to go to a homeowner's or condo insurance policy. Okay. Let's start with a condo because that's very similar to a um, to an apartment. Um, as far as you're going to have personal property coverage, but now we're also going to cover the interior of your unit. Okay. So if there was a major claim, unfortunately, let's say there was a fire in the unit the condo association will have a master policy. Mm -hmm. That master insurance policy is gonna rebuild the whole structure of the outside. Okay. But as soon as you open that door to walk back into your unit, there's not gonna be anything in there. The builder's not gonna replace that. That's on you. That's on you. (laughs) So the condo policy is gonna be your personal property, but it's also gonna give you money to fix the inside. So put down new flooring to build your kitchen again, to put in the rooms, the walls, the drywall, the ceiling fans, anything that's attached to the unit Mm -hmm. that if you were to sell it, you would leave it behind. So anything physically attached. Um, The third category that you asked about, which is great, is is the full homeowner's policy. So not only are you going to get your personal property, you're going to have a part of the policy that's going to pay for the kitchen and the flooring, everything like a condo, but it's also covering the outside of the house. So now in this case, if you have damage to your roof, we're going to be able to pay for roof repairs. If you have anything uh, you know, on your property, fencing, a pool, a screen enclosure, even landscaping, now that's all covered because you own the outside of the building as well as the inside and okay. your personal property. Okay. Okay. Um, the third or the fourth policy, sorry, is going to be the rental property. So now let's say that you buy that house and you decide you're ready to move up, but you want to go ahead and hold on to that house and, and keep it um, and just rent it out. What you're going to do is you need to call your insurance company. You need to change it to a different policy that's called a rental dwelling policy okay. or a landlord's policy. Now what you're doing is you're, sh- you're insuring the outside of the house and the inside. You're just insuring the actual structure, but you're not insuring any of that personal property. So the person that's going to be renting the home from you, they're going to need to get a renter's policy that's going to cover their personal property. Um, The landlord's policy, a lot of people don't realize too, it's going to give you extra coverage. So if unfortunately you do have a claim, it's going to replace that loss of income because you don't have a tenant. It's also going to give you some extra liability. That way if the tenants vandalize your property or you know, some other miscellaneous items that that they just, uh, some mischief basically, Uh, it's going to cover you for those repairs as well, which a normal homeowner's policy would not cover because you're not going to vandalize your own home, hopefully. Right, exactly. (laughs) You would hope you would not. So with the the rental dwelling policy, as you were talking, just another question popped into my head. So if I've got a tenant in my unit, right, right, say I own a house, I've got a landlord's policy or a rental dwelling policy, and I've got a tenant Mm -hmm. in there, and that tenant, let's say that tenant or a guest of the tenant hurts themselves on that property. Sure. Does that rental dwelling policy protect me? Yes. It does, okay. Yeah, so the bottom line is on your rental dwelling policy, you have what's called liability. Okay. What's gonna happen is if somebody got hurt and they tried to come after you with a lawsuit, mm-hmm. the first thing they're gonna have to do is prove that you were negligent as a landlord. Okay. There had to have been something wrong. Okay. So if your tenant had a party and somebody got hurt at the party, Mm -hmm. but it was because they tripped over a piece of furniture that the tenant had, there's no liability on you. You didn't do anything wrong, you weren't negligent, and so therefore it's not gonna come back to you. 
Um, but if you as a landlord, maybe there was a repair that had gone um, un unrepaired, mm -hmm. maybe there was a hole in your yard that you knew about, but you hadn't done it, okay, now there's negligence on your part. Okay. And now somebody would have a valid claim to at least start the process to, to get reimbursed for any expenses that they may have. Okay, but having, having that policy, regardless of which circumstance it happens, um, say for example state farm would right. they would take that claim and look into it and say, well no, there's no liability on the owner, or yes there is, and you know, then pass Correct. So forth. Okay. Absolutely. And and that brings up actually a really good point that a lot of people don't know is if you ever do get in a situation where you have an attorney that contacts you because somebody's got hurt on your property or there's some kind of lawsuit, you always want to go to your agent first. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the attorneys will send you some documentation and you need to be you need to be answering that. You need to take it seriously. Mm -hmm. But work with your with your um, agent and with your insurance company to be able to get that information that is okay. needed um, over to the to the right hands so they can start defending you right away. Okay, very good. Yeah. All right, well thank you. It's good information.